is just an update on my reading of The Trinity and the Kingdom of God by Jürgen Mortmann. I just want to sum up his argument so far, really, uh, or the, the flow of his thought, because he doesn't usually provide a great deal of evidence in favour of his presuppositions, but we'll ignore that for the moment. In the first chapter, Moltmann criticises uh, two more traditional ways of developing a doctrine of the Trinity. He sort of talks about God as absolute substance and God as absolute subject. Absolute substance, he refers to a kind of Augustinian Trinitarian tradition. And absolute subject, he refers to a kind of Cartesian, Hegelian uh, notion. It's difficult to describe really what he means by both, since he can be rather vague when it comes to um, describing these kind of views. And he does make a lot of generalisations. For example, he thinks that substance metaphysics entails doctrines of simplicity and impassibility. Uh, which isn't necessarily true. One can quite easily hold to a substance metaphysics uh, and reject divine simplicity. See William P. Alston's uh, article in, or chapter in the Trinity, a symposium on substance metaphysics. So in that first chapter, he kind of puts forward instead what he calls Trinitarianism, and it's interesting and rather unhelpful that he compares Trinitarianism to monotheism. But basically what he means by monotheism is that God is, or, or, or monotheisms, are those views of God as a monad, or in a monid monidic sense. But of course that isn't traditionally how Trinitarianism has been viewed. Trinitarianism is a form of monotheism. There isn't this dichotomy here that Maltman likes to put forward. Um, it would have been better if he'd used... Uh, different terminology. In the second chapter, he talks about how um, passability is a way whereby which we can see into the heart of God. Uh, and he talks about how passability, uh, God's passable, passability uh, and death on the cross reveal something about God's suffering in his eternal life um, or in and of himself. So the death of the son reflects a kind of sorrow of the father etc now this is all well and good i'm quite um willing to accept divine passability where maltman goes i think fundamentally wrong is in arguing for suffering as something that is necessary to god's eternal nature now after moving on from divine uh, passability, Montman goes on to try and put forward what he calls Trinitarian hermeneutics, how he interprets the Bible. He talks about Bart and how Bart sums up God's revelation as God as Lord. And he says in response to that, and in contrast to that, no, God is revealed as triune as opposed to um a monith he says monotheistic, but he means monadic sense. Of course, what I would say in response to that is God that is that God's revelation in Scripture cannot be reduced to simple statements like God is Lord, or simple statements like God is Trinitarian in Scripture as opposed to a monotheistic God, but that taking into account all of the scriptural data, we find that God is triune and monotheistic. He is three persons in one God. That doesn't commit us to one divine subject who has three modes of being. And it doesn't commit us to three individuals that are somehow united by perichoresis. On the contrary, I think that putting forward uh, an understanding of God's triunity that does justice to the unity as well as the, the threeness of God better explains the biblical data and um, can be quite easily taken into account uh, and you can still go for perichoresis and, and all that kind of stuff. So Mormon seems to draw a number of generalizations and false dichotomies. And you have to be really on the ball to spot them and see where he's going with them. For the most part, his argument for things like divine passability relies on um, natural theology, which is startling because Monkman wants to begin with salvation history. So, for example, he'll argue that God is triune on the basis that love is essentially self-giving. Or he will argue um, that God 
must suffer because perfect love suffers. So he's offering an argument from reason and an argument uh, along the lines of some sort of perfect being theology, which is which is quite ironic, really, because Maltman kind of wants to avoid that kind of stuff to, to begin with. But anyway, that's where I'm at to at the moment. Maltman's put forward um, a number of models concerning metaphysics, and he's denied the substance metaphysics and God as absolute subject, and put forward his own Trinitarian metaphysics. Um, in the second chapter, he looks at divine passability and how that's a way um, in which we can see into the life of God in and of himself. And then in this third chapter, he's talking about the, the Trinitarian nature of scripture. He rejects the Harnackian thesis that the Trinity is a later superfluous addition um, and, and says rather that the Trinity is an inherent feature of the New Testament witness. So there we go. That's where we are at so far. Uh, and again, I, I was quite astounded by the fact that a lot of the assumptions that Maltman makes, he doesn't argue for, he simply asserts. But for the most part, it's interesting to track his train of thought. I will stop the video now and perhaps update in a couple of chapters.